Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Beth. I am a 37 year old attorney living in the DC area with my husband. And as you can probably tell from my headgear here, today's video is going to be about the Shrek by Revolution collection. Uh, so this is actually the second time I am filming this because uh, I went to edit the footage I shot yesterday and it turns out that uh, I didn't have my microphone plugged in so there was no sound. Uh, so we're going to be doing it all again here. Hopefully that means I'll have a little bit more practice under my belt filming this second video. I already kind of know I guess the direction I'm going in and I've already tried uh, the products at least once so I can give you uh, my second thoughts uh, at least and not the first impressions. Uh, so this is quite a large collection so I thought I would quickly talk about what I didn't pick up. Uh, so there are some mini shadow palettes that I didn't pick up. One is the What the Farquad mini shadow palette that retails for $9. Uh, I guess generally I didn't pick up the more kind of villain focused items. But in general, as I'm talking about these items, uh, I just wanted to, I guess, touch on my my love for Shrek, which sounds kind of weird to say. Uh, I wouldn't say I'm like a fanatic or anything, but I believe I looked up when Shrek came out and I was about 16 years old. I was in high school and I think I was at a good age where uh, I could still kind of bond with the characters being cartoons, but I could appreciate some of the more, I guess, adult humor, if you will, uh, talking about the, uh, I guess, jokes that will go over a kid's head. Like I remember watching uh, men in tights when I was, I don't know, probably eight or so. This headband is not going to stay on for the duration of the video. I can tell you that right now. Uh, I can feel it sliding back. Uh, but yeah, I, I remember watching men in tights when I was, again, probably eight-ish, seven or eight, and watching it again as an adult. There are definitely a lot of jokes that I had no idea um, what was going on. So uh, yeah, anyway, I had a great deal of love for Shrek and I have a younger brother who's about two years younger than I am. So a lot of the catchphrases and that kind of thing kind of entered our like inside joke territory. Uh, so anyway, so this little palette um, with Lord Farquaad, um, it says, I will have perfection. So little palette, I do have some of the other mini palettes that I'll share with you. There's the larger Happily Ever After Shadow palette that I didn't pick up. That's $25. So to me, this palette wasn't, I guess, unique or special enough to pick up. Uh, they didn't name any of the shades, which I always feel like is a missed opportunity. And this is quite a large palette. It looks like there are 30 shades, I believe. And it just says happily ever after on the inside and it has the mirror cut out in the shape of Shrek's head. Um, so we'll talk about this headband in a minute. I try to leave my hair partially down thinking it might help it stay on my head. The first time I tried it on, it just kind of completely fell off. And I try to stretch it out a bit, but we'll just have to make do with a normal headband. Uh, so yeah, so I'll talk about the headband more in a minute, but I think that's about as good as we're gonna get. Okay, so yeah, so I was talking about this one shadow palette doesn't have any shade names, which again, I think is a missed opportunity. The color story is kind of all over the place, and I think if you have the names, it would maybe add a little bit more rationale to what shades they chose, but anyway. Uh, so the other mini shadow palette is the Fairy Godmother one. Uh, so this is also $9 and on the inside it says deep fat fried and smothered in chocolate. And uh, last night I did rewatch both the first and the second Shrek movies. And from what I can tell, they basically pulled from those two movies um, in developing these products because I think all of the characters are at least in the second movie. I didn't see anything that I didn't recognize, I guess, from the first two movies um, in the products. And obviously they're still putting out various Shrek or Shrek affiliated movies. Like I think there's a new Puss in Boots movie coming out this uh, holiday season. Uh, so there's also a makeup bag that's $18. Again, it has the same kind of design as the larger palette and it just seemed kind of basic. Um, there is a Fairy Godmother Magic Wand brush set for $22. Uh, it does come with a case, which is nice. You get four brushes. Honestly, I didn't think the brushes were going to be kind of amazing quality. Uh, and in general, I guess my my thoughts going into this collection, some of the products did surprise me in how well they performed. Um, but 
I didn't go in thinking these products were going to necessarily be amazing. Uh, and I don't think I've tried any uh, brushes from Revolution. I could be wrong. Uh, but yeah, I just didn't, didn't feel the need to pick those up. Uh, there's also a clay mask for $14. It's the Beware of Ogres Swamp Clay Mask. And uh, for one thing, I didn't think it would be really kind of well suited for my skin type. And yeah, I can, I can appreciate it from afar, but I didn't feel the need to pick that up. Uh, I think for a couple of these products, I remember Angelica Nikvist talking about it in a like what's new in makeup video. And um, she said for some of these, like whoever at Revolution designed them, um, should definitely get a raise because uh, they they had some really clever ideas. Uh, and I think the Swamp Clay Mask may have been one of those. Uh, and let's see, we have one other palette I didn't pick up and that is the Shrek Shadow Palette for $25. Uh, and that is again in the shape of Shrek's head. And I think they did name the shades in this one. But yeah, I just thought that'd be kind of difficult to store and I didn't feel the need to pick up all the shadow palettes. It was quite a shadow palette heavy collection. Uh, and while I'm looking at these items, some of the items are out of stock. It seems like different items kind of are going in and out of stock. And so I was kind of waiting for all of the items I wanted to be in stock before I placed my order. And I think when I first went to check out, the out of stock items were still in my basket. So I was able to check out with those, but it was, I guess, basically a pre-order. And so they shipped separately. But anyway, my point is that these products kind of go in and out of stock. So I wouldn't be disheartened if you see something that you want and it's currently showing as out of stock. Uh, I think they do have in stock notifications so you can set those up and um, I think they have free shipping at 35. So you'll probably need a few items to get to that point, but it's not the worst kind of free shipping threshold either. Uh, and like I said, you may be able to check out with some items that are showing as out of stock. So if you see something in stock that you want, go ahead and add it to your basket. So I think that's it in a nutshell. I ordered everything from Revolution. I understand that they're supposedly stocking in some Walgreens, but I don't think any of the Walgreens near me had it. And I was also checking on the Target website and last I checked, it didn't come to Target. The Grinch collection, which launched after this Shrek collection, I think is currently on the Target website. So yeah, so I'm not hopeful that this will ever show up at Target. Uh, and as far as the shipping process, um, it was pretty smooth with the exception of the one product that shipped separately because it was out of stock. Uh, but anyway, for the iHeart Revolution Gingy Highlighter, this is $10. Uh, so this is what shipped separately and they shipped it just in this like flat mailer contraption. Uh, so it kind of had these little, I don't know, wings to it and the product was inside. Uh, but like when I received it, I could kind of look down into it and see, see the product. So it ended up being a little squished. I mean, it is in a tin packaging. So the product itself is fine and I'm going to use it on camera here. Uh, but yeah, I did email them and say it was squished and could you send out a replacement? Um, they did ask me to send them a picture, which I did, and they have, I think, shipped out a new one. So hopefully the replacement is a little bit more pristine. Um, if I weren't picking this up as kind of a collector's item, I would probably just, you know, cut my losses or whatever, but Anyway, they are going to send me a new one. So um, this one, it says Gingy on the top. And then it says, do you know the Muffin Man on the side? So the packaging itself is so cute that I do want to have kind of a nicer box to it. Uh, and then the interior packaging is this really cute little tin. And the product looks like so. Uh, so I'll go ahead and apply this to my cheeks. But before I do that, I will get out another product to assist me. I guess I'll go ahead and talk about this headband too. Uh, this is the Ogre Ear Makeup Headband. Uh, this retailed for $8. It's currently showing as uh, sold out as well. Uh, but yeah, just in general, I really appreciate the attention to detail with the packaging and all the kind of jokes and everything that they incorporated. So uh, the one thing aside from this, I think being too small, and maybe that's a sign that it's 
really not meant for an adult head. Aside from the fact that it's not really big enough, uh, the other thing, so my hair stuck to it, uh, I wish they had done, uh, there seems to be kind of a front and a back, like there's a little bit of a slope here, so I'm guessing this is the front. And I wish that they had put some wire in, like around the ear hole, and then maybe also inside the ear itself, so you could like position them a little bit more, and like open them or do whatever. I think that would have made it, I don't know, more fun and... Like I was watching the movies, like I said, and I was observing like his ears moving, which is a strange thing to say. But. So yeah, so those are my, I guess, critiques of the headband, but I think concept wise, it was great. And I don't know if like sewing in wire would have made it kind of more expensive, but anyway. Uh, and then the other item, uh, I got the hand mirror. Uh, so this retails for $15. Um, it says voted fairest in the land on the back and this is something I probably would have skipped on if I weren't filming this video but sometimes you do things for thumbnails so that is what it looks like um, to be honest like this sticker kind of looks a little cheap I mean in general the construction is not super great uh, there looks like there's a little bubble there I might use a pin to see if I can get that out. But yeah, not the most amazing quality on the back. Um, the mirror itself is fine. Uh, one thing I did want to note, and um, when I filmed the video yesterday, I was actually able to demonstrate it, but I think I still have that footage. So maybe I'll just insert a clip of me removing the mirror cover because looking at some of the reviews online, people did say that the mirror was scratched. And I think they were looking at the actual like cover of the mirror and not the mirror itself uh, because my actual mirror is fine but, but the cover did maybe look like it was a crappy mirror uh, so anyway so I'll go ahead and apply some of the gingy highlighter green fuzz on me now uh, with my Anastasia A23 brush and I'm just gonna go down on his poor legs that are kind of broken off uh, like you might guess let me swatch this i mean just looking at this this is really not a great highlighter color for me uh, i think i think this is scented i think i remember looking that up yeah it does have fragrance in it so if you are against scented makeup it has kind of a spiced scent like you might expect um so that is the highlighter and if you did want to buy this and you thought the highlighter would not work on you, you could probably get away with using it as an eyeshadow. Um, but I'll kind of show you what it looks like on me. I mean, it's kind of a light application here. And I'm kind of applying it a little bit more as a blush topper. I do already have blush and bronzer applied so yeah I went in a little strong there probably probably not the ideal product for me honestly but I just couldn't resist how cute it was um, so if I just try to I guess be a little bit more subtle again not really going to work out too well for me as a highlighter so I'll try to kind of bring it down on the cheeks I think it does kind of emphasize some texture but you know I think on the right skin tone this could be pretty but yeah going in I knew that probably wasn't going to work out too well for me as a highlighter all right I think everything else I got is either a palette or a lip product like I said, this is a very palette heavy collection, probably because uh, that's what sells. Uh, so the first one I'll talk about is the By Night One Day By Day Another Shadow Palette. This retails for $18 and it has a rectangular package. As you can see, it changes between the two Fiona's there. Um, it just has a plastic sleeve. So yeah, I couldn't resist that. I know that uh, Glam Light just came out with a highlighter with the same 
type of packaging design. I think it's called lenticular, which always makes me think of the opening to The Sims. Uh, but yeah, this is what the shadows look like and they did actually name them, which I really appreciate. Um, so we have Secret, Enchanted, Tower, Princess, Love, Day, and then Transform, Dragon, Kingdom, Queen, King Herald, Magic Mirror, Pina Colada, which I thought was a really good name for that shade, uh, Rain next to it, Loaded Pistol, Rescue, Night, and Sunset. So uh, maybe a little bit more, I don't know, summery with some of these colors. I mean, there are a good amount of neutrals in here as well, but... Uh, yeah, so I'm not going to be using this one today, but I did definitely appreciate some of the choices they made. Uh, this one, by the way, I'm sure they all are, but uh, this one is made in China. It has a 12-month shelf life. It is vegan, and there are some shades that are marked as pressed pigment, which technically means that they're not being marketed as an eyeshadow because... Uh, the pigments aren't approved by the uh, U.S. Food and Drug Administration for use in eyeshadows. Uh, so that's why they do that, but personally I kind of use shadows however I want. So the other shadows I have are two of the mini palettes. Uh, of course we have Donkey here. These are each $9 as well. And like I said, this is one of my favorite I guess lines from the movie and in the morning I'm making waffles um, so I love that this is also I think one of my favorite color stories um, it says donkey and I think these are all eye safe there are some shades in the Puss in Boots palette that are marked as pigments so um, if that is something you know you want to avoid um, just make sure to check that before you purchase and um, I just the, I guess the full name on this is Donkey on the Edge palette. And we do have the dragon on the back, which is great. And then this is the inside. So again, it has the, and in the morning I'm making waffles. It has a pretty usable mirror, I would say. Um, a little plastic sheet. Uh, and then it does have some really fun embossing there with the matte shades. So it has the donkey embossing. And as I mentioned, I've already used these shades and I swatched all the shimmers as well. Shimmers don't have any embossing, it's just the mattes. But, but anyway, the mattes did survive in terms of the embossing. I do really appreciate that. So I'll be using this palette, uh, but just to quickly show you the Puss in Boots. It says, want to cuddle. And I mean, could they have picked a better image for Puss in Boots? I don't think so. Uh, so yeah, so this is the Puss in Boots palette. Okay, so I like to take a spatula and just kind of ease it underneath the cover to avoid ripping the package as much as possible. And then this one has the three blind mice on the reverse, which I think is brilliant. Uh, the, I think, Lord Farquaad palette had Gingy on the back, and I'm not sure what the Fairy Godmother palette had. Uh, so this one, same general format. <laughs> they have the different animals fur as kind of the inside design. And then we of course have for this embossing, the Puss in Boots monogram, I guess you would call it, like the P that he makes with his sword. Uh, so those are the shades. We have Fear Me, Dare, Guitar, Boots, Outlaw, Catnip, Cuddle, and Furball. Uh, so, yeah, really appreciate, again, the thought that went into naming those shades. And then for the lip colors, uh, I have all four of them. So this is the Lip Balm. Um, has an F on the cover, and I love how they incorporated the kind of storybook design on it. Uh, it says, but she was possessed with a terrible curse. By day, a lovely princess. And then on the opposite side, it says, by night, a hideous ogre. So I love that design that they went with. I think all of the lip colors are $10 each. And this is one of those transforming colors. Uh, and this is technically lip balm, but it is very pigmented. So um, this is what the component looks like. And the packaging does feel kind of cheap. I mean, it's nothing super exciting. I think the outer carton is more impressive and as you can maybe tell from the tip there because i have used it let me just wipe off 
some of the lip oil here. And this does kind of stain a bit too. So just be aware of that. But this one is scented. Okay, so it doesn't say what the scent is supposed to be on this product, but yeah, it does have, I don't know, kind of a sweet fruity scent maybe, I'm not sure. Channel your inner Princess Fiona with this transformation lip balm. Green in color when applied to the lips, this magical formula reacts with your pH to create a custom balm shade. All right, so that is it for the transformation lip balm. Again, really genius um, idea. And obviously that type of formula is not anything new to the market. I'll go ahead and swatch it on my hand as well. But I think it's a very kind of clever use of it. So that is the balm. And you can see just how pink it's getting. And it does, like I said, kind of stain a bit. Uh, the next one, I guess I'll try, I think I wanna end on the donkey one. So I guess I'll go with the dragon next. Uh, this says just reeking of feminine beauty, has the dragon um, silhouette. And yeah, I think this one is a cherry vanilla scent. And I remember one of these lipsticks being a matte. I think this one is a satin formula. It might be the Gingy lipstick that is a matte. All right, so I'm not trying too hard to perfect my lip line. That is the Dragon lipstick. Kind of a, I guess, brick red, I would say. At least layered over my stained lips. All right, and then the next one is the uh, Gingy uh, lipstick. And it says, not my gumdrop buttons on the side there. And this one, I think this one is gingerbread scented. Yes, yeah, so this is a matte. So that is the lipstick. Tie your look together with this gingerbread scented gingy lipstick, a creamy matte red. So this one does have a little bit of a different finish and scent to it. And yeah, definitely more of an orange red, I would say. All right, and then of course, last but not least, we have Donkey. And this one says, I'm a donkey on the edge. And this one, thankfully this is the last lip swatch. As you can tell, my lips are increasingly stained. So hopefully this is as good a representation of the color as I can give you. It says, tie your look together with this cherry vanilla scented donkey lipstick, a dreamy light nude that pairs perfectly with the Donkey on the Edge mini palette. Um, and this one, for whatever reason, like looking at it online, it was one of those designs where I just found it really hard to kind of see the Donkey. <laughs> I don't know, something about the, the way they drew the figure, I just had a hard time like seeing it, you know what I mean? Um, so this is the last one. And like I said, my lips are already pretty stained. I guess I would have done this swatch first, but I wanted to end up with it. So there is, I guess, a little bit more of the true color. All right, so that is it for the lip swatches. Hopefully um, my lips don't hate me too much tomorrow after doing this two days in a row. Uh, and I will, I guess, go ahead and wash the lipstick swatches off. Uh, while I'm doing that, I guess I will go ahead and show you. There's one item I did pick up from the Grinch collection, and that is the makeup sponge, um, because I thought it was just, again, a really kind of clever incorporation of product into theme. Um, it says on the top here, as you may recall, uh, the Grinch's small heart grew three sizes that day. So that's in reference to his transformation, I guess, at the end of the movie. And I re wet this yesterday, so I feel like when you wet a sponge, it never goes back completely to its original size. Um, but that is the Dry Heart. Um, it does have the Revolution by the Grinch. Uh, so I'm gonna go wash my hand off and wet this so you can see the transformation. Okay, so that is what the sponge looks like after it's been um, dampened. So water coming down my arm, uh, dampened and I've squeezed out the excess. So um, it did definitely grow and yeah, I just thought that was really cute. Uh, okay, that was, that was I think, I wanna say it was around $6, $5. It's showing as out of stock 
on the Revolution um, page, but it could be in stock at Target. So I'll link Target if it's still there. Okay, so I think that is it with the exception of the eyeshadow palette. So uh, I'm going to start off with a primer. And what I discovered yesterday, I think I'm just gonna use the mirror in the palette. What I discovered yesterday is that these aren't super pigmented um, shadows. They're also not, they're not like terrible quality. I'm gonna go in with the waffles shade on my Sigma brush. And as you can tell, like these are definitely, um, they're definitely on the smaller size. I mean, this entire palette is quite small and you're getting eight shades. So yeah, not a lot is picking up on the brush. I think that's fine though, to be honest. I like to go in kind of with a nude shade, set the primer. Yeah, so I, I think it's fine. I think honestly, the market they're probably catering to, it's better to have less pigment than more. Um, going into Boulder on my Sonia G, what is this, Classic Crease. So even, even a, you know, 37 year old professional woman can appreciate this bit of nostalgia. And I think when I received these products in the mail, like I said, I wasn't expecting, you know, like Pat McGrath or Natasha Denona quality or anything like that. But I think they definitely are usable, um, at least on my skin tone. I'm not sure how these shades will show up on someone um, with a deeper skin tone. Uh, I'm gonna go in with my little flat definer into the waffle shade. And as you can tell, they're definitely not powdery. Like I'm kind of really getting my brush in there. And that's probably one of the reasons why the embossing kind of survives is that they are not super powdery. But yeah, I'm not, I'm not being too careful or anything going in. Uh, I'm gonna go in with my mini booster into Noble Steed and try to define a little bit more. I think I have some sparkle on my, uh, my brush from yesterday, but that's okay. Yeah, but I think, you know, even though these aren't kind of obviously high-end shadows, I think just my joy in interacting with them kind of you know, makes it all worthwhile. Uh, using the MAC 224 and the waffle shade again, just to blend that out. And as far as the shimmers go, what I observed, I'll go ahead and swatch these. There's about right me, Lady Dragon, which is pretty dry. I'll show you what the swatch looks like, but um, you can tell just from swatching it, it almost kind of has hard pan. Uh, but this last shade here called Sidekick, I'm swatching this on my pinky as well. That is kind of my favorite texture of eyeshadow. Like you can tell these are kind of thinner. This one is definitely going to build up and be more foiled. So we have the silver, the gold, that kind of like duochrome. I mean, I don't know. I tried to use that, I think at first and it just wasn't really doing anything for me. Um, but that's a really beautiful shine, high reflect, great payoff, you know, everything I really ask for in a shadow. So I will go in at first with a dry brush. I think I did ultimately use it with some uh, Fix Plus yesterday, but uh, I think just to kind of show you what you can do with it. Uh, so this is a refer number 28 and just applying it to the lid like so. There is a little bit of fallout, I think, but I have definitely experienced worse fallout with more expensive formulas. So I think I would say Donkey is one of my favorite characters, but I think it so happens that this is also one of my favorite color stories out of all of them. Um, so using some Fix Plus and going back into that same shade, just to kind of show you 
how you can build it up. So, I mean, that's a really pretty just kind of dusting of sparkle, but if you really want to go in for the impact, and like I said, there's a little bit of fallout, but nothing too terrible. So yeah, so this, like I said, is my, I think, favorite type of shadow formula, but if you don't like the kind of more crumbly foil texture, you may not, you may not love this one. So I personally think that is quite impressive for, I guess, a drugstore formula. And I'm just gonna, I guess, show you on my finger as well. You know, the more you build it up, the more opportunity for fallout you're gonna have. Yeah, and I think like yesterday, I tried to use that duochrome first, like on the outer corner, and it wasn't really kind of depositing anything. I'll see if I can get anything using my finger. I mean, it's just, I don't know. It's just not a formula that really kind of wants to work. And this kind of, I guess, color texture and duochrome is where maybe you want to invest in a higher end formula. I seem to recall taking a little bit of maybe the gold. I can't remember if it was the gold or the silver. I'll just take some on this rougher number 26. Put it around inner corner so yeah I think I think it's a really pretty look I think I might want to boost up the shadow under the lash line a little bit again just taking care of a little bit of fallout okay so I think that is where I am going to leave it um Actually, I remember doing one more thing. Uh, I'm gonna take my mini booster and just go in a little bit more on the outer edge. Just to deepen it up a little bit. Now we're done. Okay, so I'm going to hop off camera and do my liner and mascara, and then I'll be right back um, to kind of finish off the final look. Okay, so that is it for the liner and mascara. And I think the last thing I wanted to do was just use some of this Pat McGrath gloss and pale fire nectar to kind of tie the lips and the eyes together a little bit. Uh, okay, so that is the final look. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing some of these products in action if you were curious about them. And I think I kind of gave you my thoughts going through, but basically I think my bottom line is I don't think this is just a cash grab. I understand a lot of people complain about makeup brands putting out these collections with various IPs and it's just kind of preying on people's like nostalgia or whatever, but I think if they do a good job with the IP, then I'm happy to have my nostalgia preyed upon and uh, I know a lot of people are like, you know, you shouldn't collect makeup because it expires, but uh, I do collect makeup and, you know, for me, just the experience of interacting with these products um, has brought me a lot of joy and I appreciate, like I said, a lot of the thought and references that went into them. Uh, will I reach for any of these products really on a daily basis going forward? Probably not. but. Uh, for me, I kind of got what I wanted out of this collection. So I hope that makes sense to you all. And again, if you enjoyed this type of video, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And uh, until next time, I hope you guys are all doing well and staying safe. And I will talk to you soon. Bye.